Hi everyone, welcome back to Lulu Math. This video is on key features of a real life quadratic relation. And in order to be able to understand what we're talking about in this video, you need to make sure you understand key features of quadratic relations or parabolas in general. If you need a refresher, there is a video at lulumath.com as well as the Lulumath YouTube channel that explains the key features of quadratic relations. So in this example, a ball is thrown upward from a height of 2 meters at a rate of 12 meters per second. The ball's height, h, with respect to time t, is modeled by the equation h equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 12 t plus 2. And it tells us that h is the height, but I just want to specify that this is being measured in meters, and we know that the t is the time, and I just want to specify that this is being measured in seconds. So the instructions tell us to use graphing technology to graph a model of the situation and describe what the key features say about the situation. So before we do our graphing technology, I just want to make a list of all of our key features. So if you remember, our key features include the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and remember the vertex and the axis of symmetry go hand in hand the roots or the x-intercepts. And if you watch the video on key features, we talk a little bit about the slight difference between roots and x-intercepts. And we also need to know our y-intercept. We're asked to use graphing technology to take a look at what's happening with this graph, so I'm going to use Desmos to see what's going on. So if you see, I have typed in the equation of my parabola into Desmos, and I've played around with the graph a little bit so that I can get a better picture of what's happening in my graph. The T stands for time. My X axis stands for time. As you can see right down here, it says time. And my Y axis represents height. We don't really care about our negative values for time because time is not negative. And we don't really need to worry about our negative values for height because we're making the assumption that the ball is not going to go below ground level. What are my key features that I have here? Well, remember, the first key feature that we said that we're going to look at is our axis of symmetry and our vertex. And if you can see right here, we can see our vertex right here, and our axis of symmetry is going to be the line that goes through the x value of this vertex. So I've put the line in right here. We can see that this is our axis of symmetry. We also care about our x-intercepts or our roots. Desmos is going to give us our information as x-intercepts, and we have two of them. One is positive, one is negative, but because our x-intercepts represent time, we don't really need to worry about our negative x-intercept. And then we also have our y-intercept as shown right here. So I'm going to take a screenshot of what's happening here and I will put it in our document so we can talk more in depth about what these key features represent in this particular situation. Let's address these key features a little bit further. Our first two key features are our axis of symmetry as well as our vertex and I'd like to put them together because the key information that they give us go hand in hand. They're going to be giving us the same kind of information. So if you see here, this is our axis of symmetry and as you can see, the equation is going to be t equals this 1.224 and what this graph is telling us is this is the path that the ball will take when we're looking at the height of the ball being graphed out relative to time. So this T stands for the time at which our ball seems to approach its highest point. So this right here is the highest point that the ball will reach. So we can say that at 1.224 seconds approximately, the ball will reach its highest point. Now for our vertex, we know that this is our vertex and our vertex is 1.224 and then 9.347. So we already know what this 1.224 represents. It's the time at which the ball will reach its highest point. But this is our actual height. So this is our highest point. So the vertex is giving us two pieces of information. What time will the ball reach its highest point and what will the highest point be? So we can say that at 1.224 seconds right here, the ball will reach its highest point of 9.347 meters. And I just want to say right here, I needed to have added in that this is 1.224 seconds. So this is great. We've covered our first two key features. The next key feature that we have in our list are the roots or the x-intercepts. 
And if you notice here, we have two x-intercepts. We have this 2.606 comma zero, and then we have negative 0 0.1570. So our roots we will write down are negative 0 0.157, and then our other root is 2.606. But if we were to write them as x-intercepts, we have negative 0 0.157 comma zero, and 2.606 comma zero. Now a couple things to remind you is that this represents the time, this represents the height. This represents the time, this represents the height. In both of these, the height is zero, which is going to tell us at what point in time is the ball going to be on the ground because that's when the height will be zero. But because we are talking about time, there's no such thing as negative time, which is why we didn't even include this x-intercept when we put the image into this document. And we can cross off the negative time in our root as well. So what our roots or our x-intercepts are going to tell us is when the ball will hit the ground. And the ball will hit the ground after 2.606 seconds. Again, the ball will hit the ground after 2.606 seconds, and this is our x-intercept. And really quickly, I just wanna label that this is our vertex because I hadn't labeled that. And then the last thing we have is our y-intercept. And this point right here on the y-axis is our y-intercept. So we can say that it is this zero two. So just a reminder that the zero is the time and the two is the height. So what this is saying is at time zero, at the beginning of what happened here, the height was two. Therefore, we can say that the initial height of the ball is two meters, which we knew from our information that's given to us because it tells us that the ball is thrown from a height of two meters. And that's what the key features will tell us about this specific scenario. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below or at lulumath.com, where you can also find blank or completed notes for this video. Also, if you have any other graphs that you would like to understand the key features of, just send us a question and we'll be more than happy to help you out with that as well. If you found this to be helpful, please subscribe and share with others. Thank you and we'll see you next time. Bye!